Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And welcome to our first interview of 2021. We're going to be having a chat today over Zoom with Nathan Foley, who you may remember as an original member of High Five. He's just released another solo single called Hurricane. You may remember him on the show back in June last year for his song She Devil, which was really, really catchy. But now his new song, Hurricane, is a lot more serious and really delving in to real conversations. So let's have a chat to him about it today. Nathan, no welcome back to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you back on the show. How are you going? Not too bad. Yeah, you're a sucker for punishment, aren't you? Having me back again. Jeez. Oh, I loved having you on. That's why I was like, yes, new song. Got to bring you on again. <laughs> uh, thank you, you for having me. Can you believe it was actually June last year that we last spoke? I was like, where did the time go? That's like what a, nine What an awful ago. year, though. What a terrible 2020 was. It just, uh, I'm just hoping this year is going to be a lot better than last year, I've got to tell you. For, oh, all, yeah. for all of Especially in entertainment, we need it. And as I said, you're my first interview for 2021, so a great way to start the year. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, when when we first had last had you on the show and the first time, uh, we were chatting about your song "She Devil." And mm. guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, please do. It was so catchy; I could not stop listening to it on repeat, as you know. But now uh -oh. you've actually got a new song out called Hurricane and it's a lot more serious, really delving in and, you know, starting real conversations, which I love. I love songs like this and I honestly think it's something that we really need today. So thank you. But where did this uh -oh. song come about, you know, for you from inside of you? I did read on your Instagram that you wrote it when facing many struggles yourself. Is there any chance you could share with us? about those struggles and how you got through? I think in a way, I mean, obviously I've been performing for just 31 years now and you take the good with the bad in this industry. You know, we always have our ups and we have our downs. We have, our, you know, amazing moments in our careers where things are going really well. Uh, but in the entertainment industry, as you know, um, nothing's ever guaranteed. There's not always a guaranteed paycheck either. And I think in a way, I, when I did obviously high five for 10 years, people saw me on TV and they see anybody on TV for that matter living the perfect life and they think that it's all roses and that they're that we're rich and just yeah. because we're on TV every day and that's not absolutely not true whatsoever so I am um, as I said 31 years and I've had my ups and my downs and, and obviously this last year has been a terrible time for all of us you know you know financially and emotionally and just just trying to find our grounds I mean there's not a lot of work out there for us entertainers at the moment and we're kind of stuck at home which in a way is a good thing for me in a way because I get to spend time with my family yeah. but on the other hand Miss performing. I miss getting out there and and uh, you know we've, we've I've had my moments and I've obviously I've I've got a lot of friends that have suffered with mental illness and 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 their, and their daily struggles as well. So it's not every day that I wake up having the most perfect day. You know sometimes I wake up feeling terrible or sad or, or down in the dumps, and other day, days I wake up and I feel like I'm on top of the world. I mean I wanted to write a song, especially in in today's time, uh, especially 2020. You know. <laughs> you know coming from the fires and the black lives matter um and also uh the COVID situation where we've been sort of forced to stay in you know small proximity of of Amazon and we can't do what we normally do so a lot of people have suffered because of that and i wanted to write a song that could sort of pick people up and help them in some form of capacity to give them that strength and give them that hope to let them know that things will improve, things will move forward. And it's only hopefully a small time of our lives where, uh, you know, these struggles will happen. But obviously, once again, you know, entertainment world, nothing's ever guaranteed and nothing's ever guaranteed in life as well. You just got to make the best of, of bad situations. Well, that's why I'm loving this song because, as I said, it's something we need to hear these days and it's, you know, great with all the other songs out there, but we also need to hear the real stuff and something that's going to get... I'm going to say, like, this song gets down to your soul, you know, and you go, oh, my gosh, yes, I can be my own hurricane and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I, did it actually come out, like, do you have any trouble writing it or did it come out really, really quickly for you and naturally? It's really weird. When I write, sometimes a song can take me 15 minutes 
to put the structure together and come up with you know 90 percent of the song and other times i could be sitting on a song i mean there's a song that i wrote when i was 18 17 or 18 it's still sitting there i've written half of it because i just wow. don't have right to finish it yet because nothing's come to mind but hurricane was actually kind of a quick process because i think when you're writing as a songwriter, if you really truly believe in something and you believe in what you're writing, uh, a certain um, subject or certain matter or something that's really uh, meaning for you to meaning for you for you at the time, it flows out a lot quicker. Mm. If you kind of things up and you're creating a situation or creating some sort of subject then that's going to take longer because you have to try and think of what the truth is about that song or, 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 the, or the songwriting behind it. But Hurricane just flew out of me really fast because I knew exactly what I wanted to say because it was all in here but I just needed to get it out and the end end progress of it all I was really happy I was like yeah it's exactly where I wanted it to be and um yeah I was ecstatic and even the music video when it came out it, it um it really hit the spot for a lot of people and myself as well because I never got to see it until until the end oh, really I feel- uh, and I didn't, I didn't know what else was going on. They filmed half of it in New Zealand and half of it in my part in Australia, obviously. So when they put it all together, and I saw it, I was like, "Wow, this is like elevated it to another, to another level." And um, I've had a lot of people that have been uh, suffering in their day to day life that have written to me. Um, uh, direct message me on Instagram saying thank you so much for releasing your song. It actually helped me wake up today and it helped me through this situation. Help this because I've been suffering mental illness in, in in certain parts of my life. And when you hear that, it doesn't matter about the ratings or it doesn't matter about how many plays you've had. Yep. It, it, it matters that you've even touched that one person to to help them in some form of capacity. Mm. Well, I'm definitely going to bring up the music video a little later on too because bits of it I just want to chat about. But I really want to talk about the lyrics as well. You know, for those who actually haven't checked the song out yet, I wanted to talk about a few of the lyrics. My number one, like, favourite lyric out of it is always here with a light to guide you. That, That was just so beautiful. And then you do say constantly, you know, to be your hurricane. But then I love that it takes a turn later on in the song and puts it back on you, that you, you know, you can lift your, pick yourself up and you can be your own hurricane. I freaking love that. <laughs> So have you actually been, you know, any friends or anything that have been struggling, you know, not just your fans, but any friends that you've maybe sent it to and made an impact with them and somehow been their hurricane as well? Uh, You know, when we deal with struggles in our life, we don't always tend to want help. We Mm. don't think we we have that sort of... um, standoffish behavior with oh we don't need to help we don't need help we don't we don't want to ask questions we don't want to ask a friend or our family members to, to help us through this terrible time or terrible day that we're having it's just sad so, you know family and friends are always there is. for you it is a, yeah so the song pretty much the way I, I i put it together is that you know we all have our struggles you know life can be crap at times but we can't always be there to help these people sometimes you've got to help yourself mm. and you've got to get out but you've got to wake up and go you know you know, I can make a difference in my life. I can change it. You know, change is inevitable. It's it's always going to happen. But if you are stuck in a rut and and you cannot move and you feel like you just can't move forward in your life, really, at the end of the day, the person that can change you more than anybody else is yourself. Absolutely. So that's why why that lyric came about is, you know, to be your own hurricane because we can, your friends can bring strength to you. They can try and prop you up and they can try and make you feel better about your life and your day but it's up to you to actually really make the change. Mm, Definitely. You know, even the things that you don't think you have control over, you really do. It is your life. If you absolutely hate your job right now, then go get another one, you know, find your passion in life. It's too short to hate what you do. Exactly. But naturally we're, we're all afraid of change. That's just, just the way it is. You know, when we make that change, (laughs) Yeah, you know, being comfortable and, and, and being in that sort of same little, box and that you live for for years mm. uh, I mean I, I dealt with that myself you know te- you know I mean as I said I've been doing this since I was a kid but high five 10 years of my life when I left that show and I said I need to go and focus on my own career it was scary it was tough you know because I was typecast as it is people saw me nothing but that guy so and even now it's still a challenge you know moving through and, and as, as a singer songwriter as, as an adult you know yeah. <laughs> it, it's always a tough sort of road to take but you got to you got to make changes you got to really um take the you know take those horns and just go yep yeah, I, can, I can make change i can do this and uh i guess in a way i'm still doing that every day of my life 
Mm. And not that I have written a song ever in my life, but it just sounds so therapeutic and like writing a journal. Because as you said, it was all inside you and you just needed to get it out. And it's good that you've also touched so many other people's lives. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is, life's a funny thing. We'll never work it out. But you're just going to take each day and uh, confront the challenges as we go and and to the best that we can, you know, we're not professional area you know no one's professional in life you know we're just gonna uh, <laughs> no. everyone deals with it. and obviously we're all different as well as individuals what one person might be feeling is totally different to what another person's feeling you know mm. uh, it's different situations different um challenges that we face what you might challenge one day might be easy for me but what you challenge my day might be really hard for me to accept or i might be I might not be able to get through that so that's how we can help each other um as humans and and uh once we get to that point then uh try and yeah be our own hurricane i guess yeah i never thought about that specific thing that's very true something i might find really challenging you might find really easy but you know yeah it just makes life fun interesting and a learning progress right <laughs> yeah and another thing i did read on your instagram about the whole writing recording pro- process is that you recorded this song in new zealand on the day that your firstborn Jackson was was due to be born, your, your wife went into labor and you couldn't get a flight home. Was it hard to continue working? Like, I don't think I would be able to even concentrate. Yeah, well, he was he was born on December 19th and that's the exact day that I recorded Hurricane. But the funny thing, he, he wasn't due till January 7th. So I took yeah. that, well, um, that trip. <laughs> I know, I took took that trip to New Zealand to uh, to record the first three tracks of the album. So I went over there and the morning of that I was leaving, because my flight wasn't leaving till about, I think it was like 2 p.m. that afternoon. I think it was about that time. Anyway, I woke up to the message uh, from my manager and my wife saying, oh, I've gone into labor. I'm like, oh crap, I've got to get out of here. But my flight, there was no flights available till that afternoon. So what can I do? Sit in my hotel room and just twiddle my thumbs. I thought well, I may as well just go and finish the song. So I was just waiting and waiting. My manager was on, on you know, on the phone to all different airlines because I was in um, Nelson. So I had to fly from Nelson from there to either Wellington or Auckland, then Auckland to Sydney. And I live on the central coast of New South Wales. So once I get to Sydney, it's another hour and an hour and a half drive from there to where the hospital is. Mm. So I was waiting. And I started doing the song and my manager came in and said, I think I've got you an earlier flight. Let's just go. Come on, we're going to go. And then my the producer was singing. He said, no, we've got this one. We've only got one verse to go before we finish the song. It's either that or go home and never come back for a long, long time. So I finished the song. We rushed to the airport and they said, no, your flight is not early. The next flight you're on is at 4 p.m. But so they mixed up. So we drove back to the studio. I finished the verse then uh went back to the airport again and then the flight was delayed oh my god <laughs> yeah then i got there flight was delayed flew from there to i think where was it auckland i think i flew to auckland uh no wellington sorry flew to wellington waited at the airport that flight was delayed so i got there finally got home and then i drove all the way up to the central coast and i think i got there at uh i think it was 8 30 at night and the hospital visitation hours finish at nine. Oh. So I only got a little bloke for like half an hour until oh. you have to come back tomorrow. So it was a pretty full on day, I must say, Jeez. but it's, I'll always, the day that the song was recorded and uh, it was the, the day that Jackson was born, so. And, and so much uh, like, you know, rushing and, and not being able to just enjoy the moment. Oh my goodness. Uh. Exactly. Well, the thing is, well, the good thing about that was my mum took my place. Like she was there with my wife, and she watched the, the, the watched the birth of my son and cut his cord. And she was one of the first to hold him. Um, I was up in the air. Luckily, it was New Zealand Airlines at the time because I could do um, you can call, you can audio call because you can get Wi-Fi in the planes. Oh, cool. So I called my mum, and she sent me through. A, I was born, and and I just burst out crying on the plane. There was this this older couple next to me, and they said, "What's wrong?" I told them, showed them the picture, and. Yeah, it was a very, very emotional time, but no, thank, thank goodness that my mum was there to, uh, to, to, to take the reins for me and look after my wife. She did so, did an amazing job. It's almost like the universe was just saying, "No, Nathan, you need to finish this song, <laughs> and then you can spend the rest of your life with your son." I don't know. 
I oh, know. Well, I spent most of the year with him last year, which is which is great, and this year so far. So it's, exactly. Uh, so yeah. universe gave it back to you, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, two twenty twenty has been positive and and negative at the same time. And the positive mm-hmm. side of it is I've spent more time with you know watching my son grow every day and spend time with the family. But the negative side is obviously the downfall in, in our industry. And you know, I don't want to get into it, but bloody cricket and tennis getting their time. You know, yeah, I know, right? Going along, but they, they, you know, cancelling gigs and cancelling performances out there. And it's like, why? We need to make an income as well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're musicians. That's what we do. We don't want to go it's get another normal job. Free when it comes to charities and things, but now when it comes to the grind, now we have to cancel your work. So no, no singing and no dancing allowed. It's it not is good ridiculous. for COVID. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you can go and watch a sporting match. That's a lot better. It's ter- it's like turning into Footloose now, hasn't it? Not a lot of dance and I know. dancing. That's and- right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I cannot believe that your son just turned one recently. So that means mm. you recorded this over a year ago, and it's obvious it's only just released now. And I really want to know: is that like? Does it, how does it feel releasing a song so much later after you've actually recorded it? Is, is it kind of like basking in the joy of the great work or are you kind of like, I just want to move on and get to the next project? Yeah, well, I, I've, I've written my whole album. I've written a few albums worth of music. Woo, yeah. you know, obviously there was nothing else to do. But the third single should be coming out too. That's been that's been recorded as well. But it was kind of out of our hands with with my management. They we we kind of prolonged it as long as we could because obviously when you release a song, um, you have to tour with it, and obviously we can't tour with it. So we thought, obviously, Hurricane would have been released a lot earlier than what it was, and obviously my third single would have been released a lot earlier than it was. We, they probably would have all been released last year, but we've been waiting and just biding our time until the till the, the gates open up and said, okay, yep, you can tour with it because we want to. We really want to tour. Um, to back up the, the release of the album. But saying that, my producer's in New Zealand, my management's in New Zealand. Oh. And so I have to finish the album and I want to finish it over there because obviously I recorded um, the first three tracks at um, uh, Studio Box and, and also at Neil Finn's studio in Auckland. So it's kind of one of those things that I, I'm, I'm hanging to get back there to finish the album. As soon as that's done, then we can start looking at a tour once we're allowed to, to do it. So we kind of prolonged it as long as we could. But yeah, in answer to your question, it has been kind of weird to wait this long mm. to uh, release it. But obviously everything's just out of our hands. You know, we're just we're going with the flow and going with the motion of what the government says and what we're allowed and what we're not allowed to do. And uh, but it keeps changing. I, I, I know. I just, I really hope to get better because I, I, I cannot wait the rest of this album um, with everybody it's going to be pretty it's a little bit um, yeah I can't wait to uh, share that yeah definitely and we really want to see it live so we're waiting patiently as well <laughs> and this song I noticed is five minutes long as well which is quite long for a song especially in like you know the radio world why did you decide to make it this long or did you just not notice until you finished recording and was like oh man <laughs> oh well it's actually actually longer there was a there was a verse an extra verse that i wrote for it that um when we got to recording was okay this goes for like almost six minutes this song i'm like mm, okay we better cut out a verse the producer said and I went okay so just choose which verse you want to cut out and i, I chose a verse cut it out I, can't even remember, I probably wrote it down somewhere but didn't realize till after there was just over five minutes but then obviously it's it's a rarity on radio that you hear people playing ballads unless they're Ed Sheeran, you know. So yeah, they don't really true. play ballads on radio that often, um, unless you're listening to you know the easy listening classics. But yeah, I think the focus of this wasn't for the song to be you know uh, promoted or pushed on radio at this stage. I think it was more of an online thing at this at, at, at the moment, mm. and uh, the to be more representative of what's going on in the world. Um, so yeah, I think if it was made for radio, they probably had to cut out another two verses, which would have been kind of weird. But I'm glad that we kept it in its entirety, and because it makes more sense. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you got Bohemian Rhapsody, which is like what six and a half minutes long, seven minutes long. Yeah, and that got played. <laughs> Still does. No, well, they got a thing for that. You know, at the beginning, I don't know if you saw the movie. But the movie, yeah. It's, yeah. It's too long. It's too long. They said, no, put it out there or we're leaving the record station. So, no, I'm glad. I mean, there shouldn't be a time limit on songs. I mean, if it's a 20 minute song, yeah, maybe yeah, that's cut it back. Long. But I think, yeah, I think I just snuck in there with just, it's just, just okay. Under. 
Yeah, because yeah. it's always kind of like around three, four minutes is kind of like the prime slot, I think. And yeah, yeah you've just gone over a little bit, but it's not too much where, yeah, as you said, uh -huh. six minute with Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so good on you, just underneath. <laughs> and you did just mention try. the music video before, which is out on YouTube if everyone wants to go check it out. And I noticed it came out on the 23rd of December, which is very close to Christmas. So did you get a proper break or were you just too busy promoting the whole time? No, I had a break, I think, because I, I recorded that. Um, I did the video for that a, a couple of months earlier. So obviously it takes time to put it, put all the yeah, editing together. Yeah. Because we kind of promoted social media, promoted the song on social media, it was a pretty breezy kind of um, publicity trek, to be honest with you. She Devil was a lot, lot busier because it was the first single. But um, I'm assuming for the next one we'll be back to the grind again and back, you know, back to the business. But um, yeah, no, it was it was kind of nice, a nice little flowing uh, release with Hurricane. I think that's the way we all wanted it. Yeah, so just during Christmas, just have to post on um, on social media just for a <laughs> quick second, and then that's done. Oh, oh just you know, just a little old ditty that I wrote. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing big. <laughs> and I'd love to know what was the inspiration for this video originally? Because instead of it being about your struggles, I do see that it is about, you know, these times that we're in right now. So not only COVID, but also the bushfires. Was it last year, the year before that happened? And mm. us just all going through it together as humans. Was that originally the plan or was it something else? Yeah. I think um, with the meaning of the whole song, I mean, I had to, you know, obviously chatted with my manager about it all and we wanted to hit hard on what we've all had to deal with, mm. not just our struggles, because obviously I don't want to sort of focus on one person or, you know, just two people. I want to focus on everybody. And and I think what makes a good song and what makes even you know, a better movie or, or, or anything like that is something that people can relate to, even if they're dealing with some totally different like if someone's dealing with something different i'm dealing with something different that they can be brought together with a certain kind of lyric or a certain movie they go oh that makes sense to me in this way or the song might mean something totally different to somebody else and i think because of all the struggles that people have been dealing with through the fires and 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 um the black lives matter and the COVID. i mean we've all kind of had to see this and deal with it um it's been a, a very challenging year for so many people around the world and i think that's what we wanted to achieve with the, with the music video mm. well you've done a really good job because it does add that little bit more uh i'm gonna say goosebumps to the song because <laughs> you know having b-roll over whatever you're singing about it, it just it adds to it exponentially for everything yeah. not just music uh, the part that got me in the clip, and I didn't obviously didn't see it till later, was the 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 older lady in the hospital putting a hand up to the window, and and obviously her her carers or her kids were just out the front and they couldn't see each other. That really got to me because I'm like, oh my god, you know, it's it's our elderly generation, you know, it's my parents' generation who you know we worry about consistently. I think crap that's going on and they're the people that you worry about the most, you know, making sure that they have longevity within their lives. So. When I saw that footage of the old lady, I was just like, this is my music, I'm crying. Oh, sorry, I think you froze there oh, for there a second. Go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I got to say your team did an excellent job at picking all the footage because it is very pivotal moments yeah. that we have been through. And some, some of them, you know, I forgot actually. I was like, oh yeah, we had the bushfires too. COVID's gone on so long, I forgot about it. <laughs> the only thing we missed out on was the bloody floods. Didn't we have floods recently as well? Yeah. Noticed. It was like the floods, then the bushfires, and then COVID. It was like <laughs> something every single year. Uh, Hopefully 2021, we... touch wood, uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. 2021 will be the year for us all to just grow in careers and personally hopefully that's what i'm yeah. that's my goal anyway and in the video too you have two incredible dancers all dressed all in white how did you find them or i'm guessing because you said it was filmed in new zealand was that other members of your team in new zealand yeah i, I never saw them till the clip so i never met them because obviously we filmed in different countries mm. but i actually wrote to them um and thank them very much for you know being part of it and you know they were, they were happy that I wrote and um, you know obviously became friends now so no it's Otis and Jane they're they're really really great and I was happy with what they did and Otis choreographed it as well 
So uh, watching that back, you know, just it was just a mixture of jazz and contemporary, and, and I loved what they really loved what they did to it, and they added just that extra bit of it. And you know, obviously, looking back at video clips from the from the eighties and nineties, you know, even the, the Michael Jackson days, there was a lot of dancing and stuff like that. It was something really mm. cool and and beautiful within that. People don't they don't do that that often anymore. You know with, with a lot of the clips it's more just you know hip-hop and, and things like that so to say something a bit more contemporary and powerful was was just an added bonus to the music absolutely and instead of just watching you sing for the whole thing it's nice to have a little bit of um movement as well not saying you know you're not moving yeah. anyway but you know what i meant <laughs> <laughs> don't sing <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure after filming uh, She Devil in in isolation, it was nice to be back to actually, you know, a bit more of. I'm going to say a little bit of more like normal filming because I'm sure you did have a yeah. lot of still COVID restrictions and not as many people on set, and for having two different parts of the film clip filmed in two different countries. What were the COVID restrictions like yeah. here at the time when you did film it? Um, they're okay f for here at the time. Um, obviously, I couldn't fly to New Zealand to do it. I mean, we've been hanging to get over there or even do something here in, in its entirety. Mm. Um, but yeah, we had uh, I was filming up here in Central Coast for my section. Um, but yeah, there was limited people, obviously. Uh, I was just a couple of cameramen um, and the, the makeup, and uh, that was pretty much it. So we had to just sort of go with that. Dallas was there as well, but yeah, we just sort of had a, a very some very small team. But I kind of like that. I don't. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a weird person because when I go into a lot of a crowd of a lot of people, I'm like, mm, get out of here! I want to get out. Of here. I just like it to be simple and, and sort of, uh, especially I don't, you know, I don't go out that much either these days. I, just, I I like having little home time with my friends. So when I was filming Hurricane, I was kind of just like a little small group of people, and they're really cool and lovely, and so it was really really comfortable. If it was like a whole crew of people, I'd be like. Uh, I don't know these people, you know, are yeah. they judging? Are they, do they like this song? You know, you just start thinking thoughts, but yeah, it's kind of like you see, you just start feeling the judgmental eyes, you know, are they watching? Are they, are they liking this song? Probably all so, just But no, it was very comfortable. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's the daily struggles, you know, it's yeah. what we all go through, you know, sometimes we overthink things. It's just, just what, it's just part of life, you know, Definitely. sometimes we overthink things and uh, could mean something totally different to what other people are thinking. You just never know, but yeah, they're probably all going, oh, I love this song, or I loved how he did that. And you're like, oh, they're looking at me. They're judging me. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. don't like that line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all in our head. Now, everybody's got to go check out the song now if they haven't already. It's pretty much on everything, right? I listen to it on Spotify, yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, go and yeah. check it out. And uh, it's been getting, it's, it's actually jumped up quite a bit in the last few days. So i um, been checking the stats and it's been a lot of people all around the world are, are watching it, which is fantastic or listening to the music. So some countries I'm like, really? They, they listen to it there? I don't, don't understand. But yeah, they, uh, uh, they're they loving it. So I, I guess it's hitting home to a lot of people, which is exactly what I wanted. Well, I'm sure your Instagram reaches a lot of people all around the world. So that's really helping. And I hope this interview does as well for you as well. Thank you. Well, if 2020 has proved anything as well, it's the importance of lifting each other up and that's really what the song is about. So if anybody's really struggling, go have a listen to the song. We're all human. We've got to stand together, especially through all this. And something I want to bring up today, Nathan, is actually Absolutely. something I wanted to bring up last time we spoke, but we ran out a little, little bit of time was about your experience performing in Mamma Mia in 2010 and on the Channel 10 TV show, I'll Survive, and also on The Voice in Team Delta, which a lot of people will remember you from just recently. Can you please tell us about it all and being in front of heaps of cameras, huge crowds, I'm going to say the stress of the live audience and picking a new song every single week on The Voice and then also memorizing lines and choreography in Mamma Mia. And did you have a favorite out of all the three? And I know it's probably a very hard decision. <laughs> so which which one first? <laughs> Whatever you want to talk <laughs> yeah. about. Whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> all right, we'll go to, we'll start with, we'll, we'll go back, we'll go back to the beginning. <clears throat> now it all started back in uh, the late 90s. No, it wasn't, it was early 20s, I think. I can't remember, a long time ago. Anyway. So music theatre, obviously, I've done a few music theatre shows. Um, Jerry Spring, the opera, I did Mamma Mia, and I did uh, Grace on the Beach, played Kinniki. But this uh, Mamma Mia was great physically. 
I got cut up massively. It was amazing. It was fantastic. I haven't seen that ever, ever again. But it was a great time to get get, get really flogged with my exercise it was great i mean look music theater is great um it, it, it hasn't always been my first thing to go to to be honest with you because i've been so used to since i was a kid to be my own person my own soloist getting out there doing rocking it out and doing what i what i love to do but it was a great experience we got to travel around australia and, and perform to different people and um, i made some good friends and uh uh yeah it was it was kind of fun um the only thing the, the negative side to mama mia was that listening to abba songs every day you know seven days a week that did my head in That's so awesome. i had to go home and, and chuck on something different all the time because you would, yeah abba's just their songs just stay in your head you know so if you listen to them every day you start you know going mental <laughs> but um i <laughs> that was the only negative side to doing that one. Uh, I will survive. Um, I sort of rejected that one a few times. I said, no, I don't want to do it because, you know, I've got nothing against, you know, music theatre and, you know, people going out there and dressing up as a woman. But it just, I didn't see myself in that kind of role or being doing the Priscilla Queen of the Dead thing. But after a while, I thought, oh, stuff it, I'll give it a go. You know, I, was, I think I was overseas at the time and they said, okay, come in. I will always respect women who wear heels and have to wear makeup now. And it's the hardest thing in the world. I don't know how you do it. I really don't know how you girls do it out there. So I have total respect for you all. But it was great. You know, I mean, with that show, I think it was highly underrated. I don't think it was promoted properly. I don't think it was out there. You know, not a lot of people got to see it. Um, at the time but you know obviously it was a talent show people were looking for the triple threat the singer dance director and uh we got to be ourselves but also got to play challenging roles of going out there and doing the acting challenges and, and, and dressing up as the female going out there and doing your challenges as well so um but yeah it was a it was a, it was a fun time a bit of comedy but uh, i got to travel and i got to the top three which is fantastic yeah. um but yeah i mean that's it feels like a lifetime ago to be honest um the voice once again that was something that i didn't want to do um they were wrote to me every year for a few years um, asking me to come on and join the show just do what they wanted me to be a part of it i'm like i don't want to do that i'm not i wasn't a massive fan, fan of reality tv shows to be honest with you but you know if you don't if you can't beat them join them these days you know the industry has changed years ago you'd have a great song and you'd get get it to be played and get promoted and and uh get recognized for that song but these days you've got to go on reality tv shows to get any form of publicity mm. just the, the way of the industry it's, it's it's terrible the way it's all gone and technically it's not about talent anymore you can anybody can be famous you know you can go on any reality show have no talent whatsoever and end up with millions of followers so i went on there i thought you know i've got nothing to lose um and they choose your songs, by the way. You don't get to choose your songs. Oh. So they chose Footloose. Chose the um, the second one I did, which is from the weekend. I can't remember the, remember the song anymore. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was interesting because it was a little while since I was on TV uh, when I went into that, and I wasn't nervous. I think I was more excited and confident to get out there and say, "Hey, I'm still alive. I'm still here." Because <laughs> if you're not on TV every day people just think that you've given up your your work they don't yeah. think about the live entertainment they don't think that you've been working i mean i never stopped working i'm 31 years in the industry of other than last year because of the covid thing but um i've never stopped working like i've always been doing shows i've always been traveling and doing my solo stuff but because i wasn't on tv for 10 years they think oh did you retire did you give up you don't see you didn't sing anymore what made you after all these years come back in the industry i'm like i've never bloody stopped being in the industry I've always been here. It's just because I haven't been prominent on TV every 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 day. But no, it was cool. Um, and obviously the fans have grown up now. They're in the early 20s and um, a lot of them have come on the journey. So I think the positive to doing The Voice for me, I never went into it to want to be the winner. Uh, you know, obviously they're going to choose someone a lot younger and, you know, obviously a bit easier to, to work with with the role of, with, the, with, the, with their music and creativity and stuff like that. So... I did it because I just wanted to say, hey, I'm still here and let the fans know that I'm still out there and take them on the next journey. And I did. I, I gained a lot more followers that um, obviously didn't know that I was still doing what I do. And I've taken them with me through this original music sort of uh, uh, journey and they're still following me and they, they I get messages all the time saying they can't wait for the album to come out. So I think that's that was the um, the most positive thing out of the voice that I got. 
Well, definitely. Even though a lot of people thought that you vanished on this earth and you weren't working oh, yeah. anymore, or as we talked about in the yeah. last interview, some people thought you were dead. Um, and then, you yeah. know, and even though they might not have known, the people that grew up with you and love you and probably follow you on Instagram, they've been following your career. So, and as you said, still there to this day. They're the people that matter. Yeah. So I'm, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. I mean, obviously, I've, I've never been in this industry just for for, for cab, of cash. Obviously, cash is good to pay bills. But I've never, that's never been my primary focus of being famous or being in, in anything for cash. I just wanted to do it because I have a passion for what I do. Yeah, of um, course. Need the cash now, though. It would be good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no. After a year, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a damn job, will you? Let's just get these, you know. Oh, have you heard? The, the, apparently, they've been having trouble with the um, the vaccines now. A few people yeah. have died away or something. I'm like, oh, geez. This was our way out to, to try and get back to normality. Now it's kind of back to the drawing board again. It's like, no. Just got to keep looking after ourselves and not spread it more so we can yep. go back to normal. Fingers crossed. Yep. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And, yeah, my, my, my beard's growing. You know, I I'm see turning. That. <laughs> Turning into a home hermit. What's going on? This is the thickest I've ever had it. Well, should start a start a country band now. Yeah? <laughs> well, if you're not going out, you're not touring. You know, what's the point? As long as you're comfortable with it and your wife likes it, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, she still likes it. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, New Year. January 2021, even though you've got this song out now, what else can we expect from you later in the year? Do you have any plans already? You said you have some other songs, so I have a maybe an track. album this year? Oh, it, all, it all depends on the government. That, they're, they're Come the on, rulers government, of, we want an album. <laughs> back alive, so that's where it's at at the moment. But I've got a third single that has been recorded and it's ready to go. Um, we just have to put the video, the music video together. But yeah it's 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 a lot different to the first two tracks um or like i can't tell you the name of it yet but it's kind of, it's very funky it's got a, it's got a rock edge but it's funky and um it's very sexy very sexy song so good something you're, that uh, you're good at the sexy songs as we noticed in <laughs> she devil <laughs> uh it's very, very sexy but um yeah I'm looking forward to releasing that one as well so it's yeah very cool i'm i'm really excited i'm just I'm just at the point where I'm like, come on, I'm just, I'm over it now. Come on, let's just get things back to normal. <laughs> we all are. It's all good. We're saying the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's up to though uh, when when that release will be. So we we haven't worked it out just as yet. So I think we're just waiting on uh, things to go back to normal. Okay. If they well, don't, the plan B. But you'll mm. be the first to know. Yes, I was going to say, keep me in the loop. You can come back on the show. Pretty much every single time you have a release, it's just going to be Nathan Foley back on. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Just consider it a second home. A lot of other people do, so here for you. <laughs> now, I thought, Nathan, because it is the first interview of 2021, that we'd actually play a legendary game on Rave It Up that I have not played in years, and I have fans that always question about it, going, why haven't you done it for ages? That's just because I just got longer and longer interviews and preferred the quality content, I guess. Don't be scared or... No, it is lots of fun and okay. quite competitive because you can also, there's a leaderboard and you can go up against other people that have been on the show. Ah! <laughs> well, I just do no attack, so I'm, I'm loving that at the moment. Okay, cool. Well, it's called the two minute hot seat. So I'm going to ask okay. you questions and you just have to pick your preference. So it's things like Facebook or Instagram, oh, rock or pop, okay. things like that. Okay. Yeah, and you've got two minutes to answer it. I'm going to give you like two minutes. 10 seconds just because it's I, I see there's a bit of delay with what we're doing today we'll do our best are you all ready okay. i'm ready all right ready ready okay three two one facebook or instagram instagram iphone or samsung iphone apple or android apple rap or rock 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 or pop both pop or country uh a mix of them's very good i like both like chris stapleton beach or mountains both. Beach or pool? Beach. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Comedy or action? Uh, I like a good comedy action. Blondes or brunettes? I have to say brunettes. Sweet or salty? <laughs> <laughs> what was that one? Sweet or salty? Sweet. Sunglasses or hat? Uh, Probably hat. SUV or convertible? 
SUV. Mac or PC? Mac. PlayStation or Wii? <laughs> PlayStation. Singing or dancing? Singing. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Italian or Chinese food? Uh, both. I'm, I love all my food. Summer or winter? Uh, uh, both? <laughs> Kim Kardashian or Scarlett Johansson? Scarlett. Johnny Depp or Will Smith? Will Smith. Mall or online shopping? Mall. Cinema or home movie? Mm, home movie. Ice cream or gelato? Ice cream. Cake or cookies? Both. Cookies or cookie dough? Ooh, cookie dough is pretty cool. Family or friends? Both. I think I have a lot of friends that are family to me too, so. Football or soccer? Soccer. Christmas or your birthday? Christmas. Night or day? Night. Bus or train? Train. Straight or curly hair? Curly. Eye color blue or brown? Brown. Vampire or werewolf? Vampire. Texting or calling? What's that? Texting or calling? Calling. Sydney or Melbourne? Sydney. Friday or Saturday? <laughs> uh, Friday, because you know that Saturday's coming, so. Oh, I like that. Okay, now we're out of time. I, I thought that was it's... more than two minutes, 10 seconds. How long did that go for? <laughs> that was two minutes, 15, just because I, I saw oh, there was still a couple of uh, breaks there that were longer than they I didn't like to be. No, I, I talked a little bit too much on some of those questions, though, and it should have been just a one-word answer. But, hey, it's okay. Well, in the There's future, no we're, yeah, exactly. In the future, we're just yeah. going to have to do this these interviews in person, and then you'll be able to get quicker and quicker. <laughs> That's a good How idea. You answered. How many questions do you think you answered first? Let's see if you get any of uh, those. Uh, 20, 25? Oh, more actually. You answered really? 38 questions. 38? Yes. Wow. And on the leaderboard, go. that means you sit. 40, 49th. So a bit, a bit far down, but because uh, the top of the leaderboard so, is 101. What, what <laughs> on? Are these the answers of, of what you like? No, no, no. It's how many you've ah. answered in the two minutes. But oh, what I loved oh. about you is you're honest with them. I think a lot of people like the, you know, people that have answered like nearly 100 questions. They just yeah. like want to go really, really quickly. But with you, you know, the fans have actually got real answers because they know that oh, you're yeah. taking the time. Absolutely. That's a good thing. <laughs> truth, truth is important. Exactly. Truth is very important. That was fun though, right? We love that game. Yeah, Aaron Ray, but I, I like that. It's cool. About yeah. time. We should have played last year. I know, but as we as we said, ran out of time last time, and I was like, well, let's do it today. And it's a great way That's to start right. 2021. There'll be so many fans that will message me now, going, "Yes, it's back." <laughs> yeah. Even I miss doing it. So that's really. Oh, that's good. You also come up with another game. Come up with yes. another game too. Yeah. So for the next interview, we'll do another game. How's that? Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm in. Sounds good. Cool. Because <laughs> I used to do another game called uh, Fill in the Blank, and it would be like a question, and then you'd have to fill in the blank. Oh, oh that's dangerous, though, with me. I, I don't know what could come out of my mouth, so. Hey, that, then we definitely have to play it. It will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> next time, Nathan, I'll, I'll, put it in, I'll put it in the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and before we go, remind us, where do we go? Follow you on social media and find out what you're up to in the future for fans that might not follow you already. Oh, we'll just go to NathanFoley.com and yeah. uh, I think it's got all the social media links on, on that as well where they can you know, obviously direct links to uh, social media, obviously streaming and downloads and, and things like that. So if they want to go directly to an Instagram, it's Nathan Foley Official. Uh, and I think it's the same for my um, for my Facebook as well. So Perfect. Easy enough to find yeah. it. And thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show again. I really appreciate your time. No, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been awesome. As I said, you're welcome on any time. So next next song that comes out, you just message me, all right? <laughs> well, thank and you. Hopefully with all these restrictions, next interview we can probably do it in person. Fingers crossed. Depends Definitely when you serious. release it. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't know yet, but I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're, we're Facebook friends, so we'll, we'll figure it yep. out. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All of the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. And if you haven't already, go check out our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all podcasting platforms. And, of course, our videos on YouTube. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.